Hello everybody, welcome back to the second installment of Ribosome and Activating Proteins. Today we are going to be looking at the more renowned RIP known as ricin. If you are unfamiliar with RIPs, I will link my previous video giving a brief introduction to Ribosome and Activating Proteins in the description. So for those who watch the popular drama Breaking Bad, ricin will most likely be recognizable and understood to be a highly potent, lethal toxin that can be administered as a powder, perhaps in a cigarette. But what exactly is ricin, and what provides its acute lethality? Ricin is a glycoprotein that stems from the castor oil plant Ricinus communis, excuse my pronunciation. In contrast with that of abrin, ricin makes up anywhere from 1-5% to of the total castor oil bean mass, a rather significant portion. The castor oil plant is used to make a wide variety of products, ranging from laxatives to lubricants. Even after some treatments, however, ricin remains intact and can be successfully extracted without the need for a whole bean. Within the plant, ricin biosynthesis begins in endosperm cells of maturing seeds, and a signal peptide brings the ricin precursor into the endoplasmic reticulum where it undergoes glycosylation and folding prior to transport into storage vacuoles, finalizing the protein's maturation. Structurally speaking, ricin is a type 2 rip, containing a characteristic lectin B chain that combines sugar residues on cell surfaces. As a reminder, it is the B chain that allows for effective binding and entry of the RIP holotoxin into cells. The ricin toxin B chain, or RTB, has 262 amino acid residues lacking secondary structure while the RTA consists of 267 amino acid residues with around 50% of residues taking part in either an alpha helix or beta sheet. In the biochemical context, previous work has demonstrated that the RTA cleaves a specific glycosidic bond within the 60S subunit of eukaryotic ribosomes, as all catalytic activity of ricin lies within the A chain. The adenine that is cleaved lies within the conserved SRL or sarcin ricin loop, which is associated with the binding of elongation factors. Therefore, the elongation factors can no longer bind the ribosome and polypeptide elongation is inhibited. Alternative studies add to this knowledge through the proposition of a mechanistic model where the ribosomal RNA substrate bound in the ricin active site interacts with specific tyrosine residues that mediate binding. Now, evidence for both clathrin-dependent and clathrin-independent endocytosis has been presented in the past. Clathrin-independent endocytosis involves lipid rafts known as caviole and micropenocytosis, which is an invagination process utilizing very minute vesicles to transport macromolecules. Once within the cell, most ricin is deposited to the endosomes. However, around 5% remains in the perinuclear Golgi. From here, retrograde movement takes the protein to the endoplasmic reticulum. In order for ricin to enter the cytosol, it utilizes the endoplasmic reticulum associated degradation pathway, while also avoiding degradation by proteasomes, which is thought to be a direct result of the low presence of lysines within ricin's structure, lysines being a recognizable factor by ubiquitin. As with abrin, oral administration is much less lethal than parenteral administration, and clinical manifestations include the well-known vascular leak syndrome. Following vascular damage, hepatocytes and nephrons exhibit secondary damage with Kupfer cells, or specialized liver macrophages, being the primary targets in ricin-induced hepatotoxicity. In the case of ingestion, vomiting, hematemesis, and conditions associated with fluid and electrolyte loss occur. In the more extreme cases, hypovolemic shock, oliguria, or anuria may occur, with the latter two conditions associated with kidney malfunction. Death often occurs within 3-5 to five days following administration. Now, in the context of chemical warfare, ricin cannot necessarily be used to produce mass casualties without appropriate aerosolization or introduction to waterways or food production lines. This would be detrimental to any and all individuals exposed, as ricin is estimated to have a lethal dose anywhere from 5 to 10 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. To place this number into perspective, cyanide, a widely known toxin, is approximately 333 times less potent than ricin. That is all the time we have for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Farewell.